The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. The non-uniqueness of voltage in an MQS system can seem paradoxical, yet it is essential to the behavior of a common transformer. When the electric field intensity is essentially irrotational, we can count on its having no circulation around a closed path. This means that its integral between two points is the same regardless of path. If the magnetic flux density in Faraday's law is important, the line integral of the electric field intensity is path dependent. This experiment emphasizes this by showing how the voltages measured by these leads and the oscilloscope are path dependent. Here's the ground lead of the oscilloscope. Here's the top trace lead. And connected to the same point is this bottom trace lead. A magnetic flux is created in a toroidal magnetizable core by driving this winding with a sinusoidal current. Because it is a highly permeable ferrite, the core guides a magnetic flux density B that is much greater than that in the surrounding air. Looped in series around the core are two resistors of unequal values. The terminals of these resistors are connected together to form a pair of nodes. One of these nodes is grounded. The other is connected to high impedance oscilloscope inputs through the two leads that follow different paths. Here's the ground lead. And we'll use a dual trace oscilloscope to display the voltages. Here's the lead connected to the top trace. And then this lead is connected to the bottom trace. The voltages observed with the leads connected to the same node not only differ in magnitude, but are 180 degrees out of phase. The ratio of the voltage magnitudes is three. This is the ratio of the resistances. The probes are connected to the same node, and yet the voltages differ by a factor of three and are 180 degrees out of phase. We check to see that we don't have the traces on different scales by reversing the trace connections. Reversal of the leads results in a reversal of the traces. Faraday's integral law accounts for this seeming failure of Kirchhoff's voltage law, for how it is that different voltages are measured by probes connected between the same nodes. This is a cross-section of the core. The pair of resistors are connected in series. The node that is connected to the ground terminal of each probe is here. One scope terminal is connected to the other node like this, while the other is connected like this. The scope resistances are very large compared to either R1 or to R2. So the current carried by the oscilloscope leads is negligible. 
This means that if there is a current I through one of the series resistors, it must be the same as that through the other. Because it encloses the time-varying magnetic flux carried by the core, there is a current circulating through the resistors. The induction of this current is predicted by Ohm's law and Faraday's integral law. Here, the key contour is the path of circulation through the resistors. And the surface cuts through the core. The voltage measured by trace one is determined by applying Faraday's integral law to this contour. Because it links a negligible magnetic flux, what is measured is just what is expected. The negative of the current times the resistance R sub one. The voltage measured by trace two follows from this contour and is the same current, but multiplied by plus R sub two. The current out of the positive terminal of R sub one is that into the positive terminal of R sub two. When voltage one is positive, voltage two must be negative. The ratio of the voltages is the negative ratio of the resistances. In our case, the ratio of the resistances is 30 ohms to 10 ohms, three just as we measured. If the probe leads follow the same paths, the signals should be the same. If we remove one of the leads and then connect the other one to its own ground, after having looped the lead through the core, what we see is this. Just as the series resistors form the secondary of a transformer, so now the lead itself is a one-turn secondary. The measured voltage is simply the time rate of change of the flux through the core.